I think the key question for us, Neil, is what is President-elect Trump signaling with this series of uh, nominations that he's already announced? Now, you don't and like the fact that a lot of them have a lot of money, and I guess Rudy Giuliani would have been in that camp with a lot of money, not quite billionaire status, but a lot of money. You don't like that. Why not? Well, I think the thing that we're more concerned about is the idea that the woman who's going to lead the Department of Education actually has never attended a public school, never taught at it, um, doesn't believe in public education. I think are deeply concerned about a labor secretary who's violated labor law that doesn't believe in the minimum wage. It reflects to us doesn't, that so, uh, I think in, 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 in the case of any president, the minimum wage just doesn't think it should go to $15. Well, what he has said is that he thinks $10 is too high. And we know that 10, 64 million Americans are living in poverty uh, because they don't earn $15 but an hour. But is that a litmus test for a labor secretary that he or she must automatically support a much higher minimum wage? I think the labor secretary in this country needs to stand up for working people and help the country create good jobs. So what if he and says he's standing up for working people by trying to protect them from getting priced out of their jobs? I think that that's a good starting place, but he hasn't said that. Uh, he has said that he wants well, yes, to replace working people. Yes, he has. I've had him on my show with... many, many times. That his concern, oh. his biggest concern, was that to lift it too much, you you would force companies to do what I'm holding up a Newsweek cover, this latest one for you now, that shows how they're automating. And what's compelling and making this case for 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 so many companies to automate are higher wage costs and and the like. What do you think? But. Neil, how do we explain the fact that when wages have gone up in cities like Seattle, more small business jobs have been created? It's common sense economics. When people have more money in their pockets, they no, spend it in No, I understand that part, but is it uncommon to think that some businesses would look at the prospect of those costs and rules and opt out? Well, I don't think it makes sense for businesses that are earning record profits and where CEOs have a record amount of inequality between well, that's their pay and the pay of their frontline workers. Well, that's different than a little franchise or a small business or diner running things, right? But Putzker is earning in one day what minimum wage workers earn in a year. And that level of economic in inequality is unsustainable in this But that's not the same with country. a small operation versus a Fortune 100 company, right? Right, but those small operations aren't going to be able to raise wages unless the Fortune 100 companies step up and invest in their frontline Well, you just said workforce. the Fortune 100 companies can afford to do it. The little guys can't. But they would be able to do it if people had more money in their pockets to come into their diners and have a meal. Yeah, Most that's minimum a wage and workers can't afford you don't, that. You don't know that, right? You do know that many are automating now and cutting staffs now. Well, I know in the cities that have raised wages that more people can go buy things from small um, businesses and they are able to employ right. more people. Mary Kay Henry, thank you. And also for uh, being on top of these latest news developments. Very good having you. Mary Kay Henry. Uh